My name is Greg Nicotero. I'm one of the co-owners of K&B Effects. One of the first things you learn when you walk into a meeting with Steve and Nancy and Brent is the first thing they'll say is, we're honored to have you part of the team. You walk in and they're like, we're excited about your ideas. And you all of a sudden you feel like there's a big group of people that have this monumental task in front of them, but they're all jumping into it together. Just a couple patches like that looks pretty good. One of the new elements that's been added into the scenario that, that the fans don't know about and people won't know about until they see the movie is the baby graboids. Dragons, uh, dirt to dragons. So we took the original design and we kind of said, what would these 30 foot creatures look like if they were four and a half feet long? They were kind of the cherubic infant version. And ultimately what we ended up doing was a couple, like four or five different sketches. So we made them look like grubs where they had these infantile little mandibles and little tiny nubs of teeth growing and, and little sort of uh, little feelers, little legs that, that you get the impression that, that this was the precursor to the adult. And then it went from that to a little maquette so that everyone could look at the size. Yeah, see here's the design. We're definitely going back to the old school. I mean, there's barely any CGI in this film. So what we're doing is not only are we building the adult full-size Graboids. Open the mouth. But then we're building a quarter scale, which is approximately six and a half feet. And the, the, the goal, of course, is to intercut the full-size puppets with the miniature puppets seamlessly. With the Graboids, Basically, what we've done is we've taken a 12-foot graboid, we've mounted it on a big western dolly, which is a big dolly with wheels on it. Um, and on the middle of the dolly, we've attached a big teeter-totter mechanism. So if my hand is the mouth of the graboid, it can raise up and lower and swing side to side based on the single pivot point. So you have a couple guys operating it who on action can pull a lever and the thing will raise up. Action! Then you have a couple other guys that as it raises up, they will be in charge of opening and closing the mouth. So it takes six to seven people to adequately operate the puppet to bring it to life. And then we have these big six foot tentacle mechanisms that come out of the mouth that the tentacle looks like a big snake where the tentacle can move around and then we can open and close the mouth on it. Here's some of our stunt tentacles. Now, a lot of times when you do shots where the creature's bursting out of the ground, you do something as simple as a little hand puppet and then the mouth opens and closes. But more effective are our cable controlled puppets. It's pretty good as long as you could just keep them down and just do that wrapping, wrap them the other way. Whoa, that's the drunk version. We wanted to make these Graboids so they could swallow an actor all the way. So we remodif we remodified the mouth so that you could actually get a guy to slide inside it. There's little panels of material in there that will open up as uh, our actor slides inside the mouth. There, there's a sequence of events that you go through when you're dealing with the Tremors creatures. It's like you do a the very earth tone paint jobs with browns and, and dark greens and, and blacks and, and that kind of stuff. And you spend a lot of time making the mandibles look like they're hard shells. Mandibles are all made out of fiberglass. And then the, the foam skin ends, the foam skin actually ends here. So what we did was we had our, our, the girls in our fabrication department fabricate the neck from here to here. So this is all made out of material with foam latex over top of it, and then Mark's airbrushing the pattern onto it so that you bridge the gap, and not only do you carry over the texture from this to here, but then once you carry over the, the painting texture and dress it, then it looks, it's like a nice smooth seam. And then you get on set and you just dump dirt all over it, and then it just sort of evens everything out. Dust. And dust. Because no matter how great the paint job looks, as soon as you dump walnut dirt or whatever the kind of dirt is that we're using now, then it's just a big brown slug that's rolling around in the dirt. <laughs> For me, my goal always is to 
to challenge the audience. I want to be able to do gags or do shots where people walk out and go, okay, how did they do that? Wow, that was cool. I never expected that. And that, that's the fun, that's the fun part.